The city builder genre seems to be going through a bit of a renaissance at the moment, with lots of indie titles flying under the radar. Today we're going to be taking a look at a handful of upcoming city builder titles that contain a hefty dosage of Middle Ages theming. So don your crown and get comfy in your throne as we take a look at Foundation, Patron, Becastled, and Diplomacy is not an option. First up, we have Foundation by Polymorph Games, which launched in early access on Steam and Good Old Games on the 1st of February 2019 after a successful Kickstarter campaign. Foundation is extremely easy to get into thanks to a comprehensive tutorial that teaches you all of the game's basic mechanics and systems before letting you loose to create your own little digital ecosystem. The game employs a gridless build system, allowing the player to build every type of structure wherever they wish. And one of the coolest features is the ability to paint residential zones on the map, which results in villagers building their own houses, alleviating some of the workload and allowing the player to focus on other construction projects. Most of the buildings have preset models, but some important buildings such as your manor house, which is where you handle most of your lordly duties, have modular components that allow you to upgrade the building over time, with bigger and better upgrades becoming available as you progress through the game. Progress is measured by your prosperity, which is a measure of your village's overall success and can be increased in a variety of ways, such as trading high volumes of goods with neighbouring villages or accumulating lots of wealth. It's important to note that these neighbouring villages don't actually appear in the in-game world and are instead theoretical, with the in-game explanation being that they exist just outside the boundaries of the map you're currently playing on. Personally, I think it would be nice to have the neighbouring villages physically present, as it would be interesting to see them grow alongside your own village, and could open up additional gameplay opportunities, but I don't think the developer intends to go down that route. Appeasing your neighbours will also unlock unique bonuses and building chains that come with their own gameplay loops. For example, dedicating yourself to the good of the kingdom will unlock military-themed buildings that allow you to send armies off on expeditions for various rewards, whereas dedicating yourself to the clergy will allow you to build monasteries to recruit monks and nuns that can produce unique resources. The simulation aspects of Foundation are quite varied, ranging from having to manage your villagers' needs by ensuring they have access to basic amenities such as food, clothing and a suitable place to live, fulfilling requests for visitors from neighbouring villages, and ensuring you have a steady flow of resources. Eventually you'll even have difficulties such as producing luxury items for your most esteemed villagers, finding suitable land for farms to maximise their crop output, and making sure your residential zones are as appealing as possible for your villagers. Even though Foundation is currently in early access, it has a lot of content, and is sure to provide many hours of enjoyment and the Steam store page mentions that it contains roughly 60% of the planned content, which makes me very excited to see how the game's going to turn out. There's also a dedicated modding community with tons of mods available directly from the game's main menu via mod.io. Overall, I think Foundation is definitely worthy of a purchase, and I look forward to seeing how it progresses. Second on our list is Patron by Overseer Games, which launched on Steam and Good Old Games on the 10th of August 2021. And you might be thinking, hang on, Patron isn't in early access? And my answer to that is, well, it should be. If Foundation was the equivalent of being curled up under a comfy blanket while listening to the rain softly pitter-patter outside your window, then Patron is the equivalent of being stuck in the wilderness in sub-zero temperatures, and a grizzly bear just decided that it's going to maul you to death. Needless to say, it's pretty rough. The tutorial teaches you the absolute bare minimum, and then immediately throws you into the deep end with no floaties. The new user experience is so dreadful that I indirectly caused all of my villagers to die from lack of heating during the winter months on my first playthrough, which introduced a unique mechanic that I've not seen so far in any of the other city builders I've played. Your villager's resource consumption will change from season to season, meaning they'll use more firewood or coal during the colder months and spend more time indoors. This results in a lot of micromanaging, as you have to keep a constant eye on your resource production versus consumption, and you'll have to spend lots of time swapping villagers around to different jobs based on their current needs. 
The game uses a grid building system, which means it's extremely straightforward and simple, even if it does result in your villages looking a little blocky. Unfortunately, this also means your paths and roads will be in straight horizontal or vertical lines, which can look incredibly out of place at times. The only real goal in the game is to expand your village as much or as little as you want, which is good because juggling the needs of your citizens becomes increasingly difficult as your village expands. Progression is also based entirely on your ability to manage your wealth, with each new technology or building requiring a certain amount of gold or raw resources to unlock. Trading is also incredibly simple, with each resource buying and selling for a specific price, so there's no need to worry about constantly checking market trends or anything of that nature. The UI is one of Patreon's weakest aspects and could do with a complete overhaul, as well as the game's notification system. For example, your villagers go through three different stages during their lifetime, starting off as children, growing into young, and then finally becoming adults, which is when they can be assigned jobs. But the only way to tell when a villager grows to the next stage is to keep a constant eye on your village's status window, which is this tiny box. It's little things like this that make me wonder how this game could be considered anywhere near finished, and it looks like the game's going to remain in this state due to the fact that the developers have already moved on to a new game. Patron does have limited modding support via the Steam Workshop, but the majority of the mods seem to be small tweaks to make the game easier, because, as I mentioned previously, the game is brutal even on the default difficulty. Overall, I would only recommend picking up Patron if other city builders haven't provided enough of a challenge, or if you're okay with the substandard UI and lack of quality of life features. If the previous two games focused a little too much on the civilian side of city builders for your liking, then these next two games may be more appealing to you, as they both have a very heavy emphasis on combat. First up is Be Castled by Mana Potion Studios, which launched in early access on Steam and Good Old Games on the 8th of February 2021. The premise for this game is one of the simplest I've encountered in a city builder. Gather resources during the day in order to build an army, and then survive the nightly AI onslaughts. The tutorial is short but sweet, and gets you straight into the core of the game, although at the time of recording it did bug out and I was left to learn some of the mechanics by myself, but literally two days after recording there was a major patch that claims to have overhauled the tutorial. So, full disclosure, I haven't played with the revamped tutorial, but I assume the game is now even easier to get into. The freeform building allows you to place things anywhere you wish, and the game will slowly encourage you to expand more and more by spreading vital resources further afield, which you'll need in order to pay for the upkeep of your ever-expanding army, as the nightly raids get progressively more difficult to withstand. Progression is measured in the form of a simple tech tree that offers new building types, materials, martial units, and buffs in exchange for knowledge, a resource generated by building a library. The biggest flaw with Becastled is its current lack of content, as I was able to unlock the entire research tree within just two hours, and from then on the game just plateaus, which is a huge disappointment because the game was really enjoyable up until that point. The game's Steam store page doesn't give much indication of how much content is still to come, and is instead rather vague, giving a short list and then the statement, we might find some cool things that we want to add along the way. Overall, Becastled isn't quite ready for a purchase just yet, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Development has been slow, but that's entirely to be expected as the developers are located in Ukraine. Last but not least is Diplomacy is Not an Option by Door407, which launched in early access on Steam and Good Old Games on the 9th of February 2022. This is the only game in today's video that has any sort of narrative campaign, and fortunately, it's very enjoyable. Each level is preceded by cutscenes with lots of pessimistic sarcasm sprinkled throughout, which makes for a humorous change of pace between missions. If the campaign isn't to your liking, then you can embark upon the endless endurance mode, or play handcrafted challenge missions. Making Diplomacy is not an option by far the most feature-rich title of those shown so far. The tutorial gives clear step-by-step -step instructions and serves as the perfect introduction to the core gameplay loops. 
Similar to the castle, the basic idea is to build a strong infrastructure that's able to support a strong army. Enemies will assault your keep at regular intervals, with each wave becoming increasingly difficult to fend off. Enemies also spawn randomly around the map, and any enemies that aren't defeated will join the final assault wave, meaning you have to make the decision to send out expeditionary armies to clear the map, or wait until the final wave and risk facing a larger enemy force. Progression is gated by the amount of resources you're able to stock up on, with upgrades being purchased directly with said resources. There is a research tree, but it works slightly differently to other games, in that it doesn't unlock new technology, but instead provides various buffs to the technology you already have access to, resulting in the game feeling very streamlined and allowing the player to focus on the combat without worrying too much about what to unlock next, meaning less time spent in menus and more time beating up peasants who dare to oppose you. Overall, Diplomacy is not an option gets a big thumbs up from me, and although the game only contains the first two levels of the campaign at the moment, the other game modes provide more than enough content to sink your teeth into and should provide a good number of hours of enjoyment. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I had a lot of fun making this one, and I'd love to make a follow-up video covering more games, so let me know in the comments section any potential gems I may have missed. One thing I'd like to see is a city builder that contains some sort of multiplayer functionality, whether that be cooperative or competitive. I think there's a gap in the market for a game where you either work together to build your city, or compete with one another to build the best city. As always, huge thank you to you for watching this video and listening to me ramble on about video games. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter as it helps out immensely. See you next time. Thank you.